Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Supposedly, this is a game changer, according to the Russians, and they are very, very ecstatic about it. Uh, they claim that they build a long-range strike drone. Well, long, how long? And uh, it's a fantastic, fantastically long range according to their specification provided by the Russians. Now, this is also to uh, minimize the so-called Iranian-provided drones that the Ukrainians are um, you know, claiming that uh, the Russians are using each and every day. Therefore, Iran is part of the conflict, but uh, NATO provides and NATO states provide the Ukrainians with uh, weapons, uh, but they are not involved in the conflict. Um, you see, uh, that's how logic uh, works for these guys. And justice and values and principles, you know, uh, just uh, situational. Uh, I use this here, but here it's against my interest. I'm not going to use the same rule I used here because that's against me. So, mm, so let's see what's going on here. This article comes from Sputnik. Sputnik. And it's from today, the 7th of June, 2023. Moscow's long arm. Meet Russian long-range strike drones. Plural. Okay, here it is. That looks sl sleek. <laughs> Drone warfare has become an in integral part of the conflict in Ukraine. What kinds of long-range strikes drone capabilities does Moscow have at its disposal? Question mark. Sputnik explores. Russia has dramatically ramped up the use of long-range reconnaissance drones to serve as target finders for missile strikes in the Ukrainian hint hinterland, with Britain's Ministry of Defense attributing their use to the success of Russian missile strike deep inside the country last month. Now, this is the drone. Alongside these snooper drones, Russia's military industry has also developed and fielded, and fielded a lineup of long-range heavy strike drones. So not reconnaissance, heavy strike drones, including the Orion, the Sirius, and the Altius. I'm going to have my own pronunciation. Don't tell me how to pronounce it. Also known as the Altair or Altair. <laughs> okay, these UAVs more reminiscent rem, re, remind, reminiscent whatever you know remind remindering remain uh, reminding of manned aircraft than their smaller slower reconnaissance and kamikaze drone cousins oh my they're related have ranges measuring in the thousands of kilometers cruising speeds up to up up of up to 250 kilometer per hour so they might go up to 200, 250 kilometers, that's what, 160 or 70, uh, maybe more, miles per hour. Servicing ceilings as much as 12,000 meters, that means how, I'm guessing how, how high they can uh, fly, and an endurance time of as much as 48 hours. So that is how many hours they can be, uh, you know, uh, going around. So I've made a little calculation if this is what it is, you know, endurance time, uh, 250 kilometers multiplied by 48, ram pam pam, 48, 200 kilometers is pam pam pam. So that's 12,000 kilometers. 12,000 kilometers. That's how far they can go. I think that's crossing um, uh, the, the, the Pacific, uh, I'm sorry, the Atlantic. I will go by that. They go over to Europe easily and then probably they go to the Atlantic. I know that is about 7,000 miles from Europe, certain airports. And I flew to, I don't know, the eastern part of the United States. So anyway, this is um, 12,000 kilometers uh, flight autonomy, I would use it. Their weapon payloads vary from 200 to 2,000 kilo kilograms. Oh my God, that's a lot over there. So 2,000 kilogra kilograms would be about, uh, let's say 4,000, uh, almost, let's say almost 5,000 pounds. Not almost, but 4,000 pounds, 4,200 pounds, let's say this way, from 200 pounds. So, and can include precision missiles and area bombs. As for guidance, it can include satellite navigation, inertial navigation, 
they're just gliding i'm guessing and in the case of the sirius and an altius interfacing and integration between manned aviation and artificial intelligence while such drones large size make them more vulnerable to traditional air defenses their ability to attack distant targets with heavy firepower all working all without risking the lives of pilots makes it all worthwhile all right well we can't use this right now so this is it my friends uh can get high <laughs> not that kind of high of uh, 12,000 meters uh, so that's 12 kilometers altitude so that will be about what uh, eight seven eight uh, miles altitude 250 kilometers per hour uh-huh 48 hours um they say endurance time as i've calculated in this little thing here 12,000 uh kilometers flight autonomy so i think they're uh, they are dangerous but they're slow as they said but if you get high enough uh, you will not and you get quickly high enough uh, to a higher altitude you will not be probably uh, blow up by blown up by uh, air defense systems if you go that high um, i don't think they go that high <clears throat> they have different ways of hitting them by sending an interceptor that would be the best way and then from the interceptor hitting it in the air like they did with that u2 <laughs> in 1961 or 1962 u2 was it uh, remember when the russians could not hit the american u2 spy planes and they were flying over soviet union they say russians my bad the soviets i see get the same stupid uh they they trained us to think that the russians were the soviets which they were not uh the ukrainians were as much as the soviets uh as the russians and the georgians remember stalin was a georgian i mean trotsky was a jewish if you want kaganovich was jewish beria was uh, another <clears throat> guy from uh, i think he was georgian as well and uh, you got uh, many others uh, over there that i'm not gonna mention that were all other things but russians so uh, the russian was the i was about to say that smart guy called uh, uh mikhail gorbachev he was a uh, a Russian and what did he do <laughs> he up Soviet Union good job and Stalin what did Stalin do with Kaganovich and the other uh, friends over there all right so let's go back here so anyway my friends they have this uh, so they blew up those uh, that that U2 U2 now the um, the U2 the airplanes and then the Americans deny they fly uh, spy planes. No, we don't fly. And then the Russians show the pi the pilot of the U-2 on the television and say, hey, what's your name? Uh, Tom Jones. Uh, he's Welsh. Let's move something. And Michael Jackson. Oh, no, the pilot was white. Let's move to something else. Joe Biden. Okay. <laughs> oh, Joe Biden. My name is Joe Biden. I was uh, flying on U-2 plane. That's why I was shot down, because I was Biden. Ooh. So, how they do it? They, they they build i think the mig 31 the interceptor oh no mig 31 was built later it was a different name uh i can't remember now the interceptor i don't want to look you can look anyway and that went up high enough blew it went down the guy uh i was about ejaculated no he ejected and then he was uh, captured and showed so same here uh these guys have to send probably an interceptor and hit that high we'll find out because definitely the Russians will send a few of this uh, I hope anyway I don't hope thank you very much for being with me again today stay strong stay smart look for the truth and be just